creamy creme brulee with its caramelized sugar crackle on top is a staple on restaurant menus, which is why every pastry chef has to master it. I'll start things off by showing you a vanilla bean creme brulee. The beauty in making creme brulee is its simplicity. That magical combination of cream and egg yolks that is just so decadently rich. I do start with a lot of whipping cream. You can't use 2% milk or skim milk. You have to use whipping cream for that richness and that silky texture. I'll heat the cream on medium heat to bring it up to temperature slowly. It's actually an important tip because whipping cream, unlike milk, can actually bubble up and boil over. To take advantage of the cream heating, I want to infuse that beautiful vanilla bean flavor. Now, when you're using a whole vanilla bean, you want to store it in an airtight container to keep it nice and fresh. And to check the freshness, you want to make sure your vanilla bean is nice and pliable, and it should be rather plump looking. Give it a little massage just to loosen up those vanilla bean seeds, and then slice it lengthwise. And that exposes all the seeds inside. Then using the back of your paring knife, just pull all the seeds out. Don't press too, too hard. They will travel with the knife. Now, there's as much flavor in the bean itself as the seeds. So to add that extra hit of flavor, I drop the bean itself in, and I'll pull that out before the creme brulee goes into the dishes. Give the vanilla bean seeds time to infuse into that cream to transfer that beautiful aromatic flavor, and I'll get my eggs ready. So I'll separate first four yolks, because a creme brulee is supposed to be, above all, rich and creamy. I've discovered that adding a whole egg lends a silkier texture and a lighter consistency that makes the creme brulee more palatable. It's not so dense and heavy. I'll add three quarters of a cup of sugar and give that a little whisk to blend. So before I add it to the eggs, I'll pull out that vanilla bean And now, to gradually add the hot cream to the cool eggs. I'll strain it. One of the few challenges in making creme brulee is to get an even caramelizing of the sugar on the top. And if you have bubbles on the surface, that'll actually prevent the sugar from browning evenly. So what pastry chefs do is you take just a simple square of paper towel and touch the very top of the creme brulee where you see an air bubble and the paper towel just pulls it right off. You need to bake creme brulee in a water bath. Surrounded by water, the creme brulee gently cooks and cooks evenly. And that's a key step to that creamy custard all the way through. And I fill up the pans to just halfway up the dishes. There we go, in 30 minutes, these will be set. There we go. And you can see it still has that visible jiggle right in the center. That is when the creme brulee is done. You have to allow the creme brulees to cool completely to room temperature. The fact that the custard is still hot, it will continue to cook right through to the center. Then you chill them for at least four hours so that custard sets up evenly. So you gotta budget a little bit of time. But once your custards have cooled, then it's time to play. You can make and chill the custards completely ahead of time, even a full day ahead, but the caramelizing of the sugar has to happen right before you're about to serve it. So I like to do just a little single layer of sugar to start. I'm using a butane kitchen torch designed just for this job. You want to keep the torch moving so you don't burn it.
and that caramelized sugar has that sort of toasted marshmallow fragrance to it. Mm. And this is what I'm waiting for. Spectacular. Mm -hmm.